Okay, so welcome everyone um, to the phone gap installation. Um, this is for NGIT's um, CP3 course 373, um, web development for mobile. So in order to install phone gap and use Xcode, you need to install Xcode. You have to have Xcode installed on your computer. In order to do that, um, on almost every single Mac, it should be come by default. The App Store should be installed or docked on the dock. So click on App Store. Just navigate to the search bar and type in Xcode and then hit enter. And for me, it says installed, but if um, it wasn't installed in your machine already, it should say something that says free, and then just click on free and install. After you do that, the Xcode download normally takes a good uh, three or four minutes, and to in actually install, it takes a good um, four to five minutes to install. All right, so when you're done with that, navigate to the PhoneGap website, which is PhoneGap.com. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go to download phone gap on the home page. But we're not going to download the most recent version. What I've noticed with recent software, and this is just something in general, is that there's sometimes a lot of bugs and a lot of fixes that need to happen. So you're better off probably going with two, two and sometimes even three versions below the current version. So right now, the stable current version they have is 2.4.0 and the one that was just re released two days ago which is PhoneGap 2.5 um, that definitely has some fixes and bugs that they have to address so I recommend going down to 2.3.0 and the reason why because it, very, it has a very very good and solid interface okay and good it works pretty much okay so after you download that um, I simply put it on my desktop um, you want to go ahead and you want to open up terminal. Now, for those who don't know, if you go on the launch pad, there's an other um, subsection here. And just click on terminal, okay? Or you can simply spotlight terminal and then and click on it, okay? When you load up terminal, your username shows a first, and then there's this dollar sign, and this basically is asking you for a command. Now, Mac is built on a Unix system, so it uses all Unix and Linux related commands, okay? So the first one that I'm going to show you, the first we had to do, it, we're actually going to go from the home directory all the way out to this phone gap folder on our desktop, because we need to get into that folder. So in order to see where we are, we need to sort of issue the command that says PWD. And what this does is when we enter PWD and hit the enter key, it returns this line that says, okay, we're at this users, we're at the user folder, Paul Musician, Desktop, and Phone Gap. And what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to go navigate to my home, so we're all together. So now we type in PWD, it tells us that we're at this home folder. So if I was to go sort of graphically and show you where this was, I would go to my Finder, I would go to my MacBook, my hard drive, and then I would go to Users, and then I would go to my username. So pretty much we're in this folder here where it says Applications, Desktop, Documents. But in order for us to see this in the using the terminal, we need to see LS. So if we do ls, it shows us all the folders that's inside of this folder called Paul Musicin. Okay, applications, desktop, documents, downloads, the Dropbox, for site, whatever, not go on. We need to go to their desktop because desktop has that phone gap folder. So in order to change the folder or change the directory, we can type in cd and then desktop and then hit the enter key. And now, if we do PWD, it tells us that we're in the Users, Paul Musicin, and Desktop folder. Well, how do we know we're there? Well, let's do an ls command, and we'll see that there are some items here. Now, my terminal is set up that I get to see some of the hidden items that are on my desktop, and, and my recycle bin is hidden on the desktop. But I can still see that I have an alias of documents, my phone gap folder, my Spring Objective folder, um, Spring Objective C folder, and I have some other things on there as well. Okay, so now I want to go into the Phone Gap folder using the terminal cd Phone Gap, and then I do an ls, and it t tells me that there is, I'm sorry guys, that there is one, two, three, four, six 
folders in here, or six items in here, and it does correspond. So we want to go into the lib folder, cd lib, and I'm sort of going to do this, that you also see this well over here, and then we're going to do an ls, and we everything matches up. And then we want to go into the iOS folder, because we're building Apple apps. If you were building an Android app, you would go into the Android. Um, if you were building a BlackBerry app, you would go into BlackBerry, Windows 7, you would go into Windows 7. When we're in the iOS folder, we want to then go into the bin folder. And when we're inside the bin folder, this is where we really, really want to be. This is where the majority of our work is going to be um, put into. Okay. Now, there's another way how to get to this folder here. And it's a much more simpler way, if I can find my um, phone gap folders right here. Much more simpler way is... And I'm just going to go back to my home. Is me entering CD and then just dragging the folder into terminal and hitting enter. And what it automatically does is it finds the path for us and we're automatically there. So CD lib, iOS bin, and we're back into the folder that we need to belong to. Okay? So now that we're in this folder, we have to ish, we have to call this Unix application that says create. So we do this dot forward slash create. The name of our project, and we're just going to say hello world. The publisher of our project. And then the name of our project again. Okay. And what this will do for us is it will create our project in the bin folder. Now we're going to do an ls command and we're going to see that our project has been created for us and it's a hello world. If we're in here we can also see that this hello world folder has been created for us and in the hello world folder directory there's a Cordova, Cordova lab, hello world, hello world dot x, x code project and there's this www dot. And for now what we want to do is we want to navigate into hello world, okay, and we want to do an ls command. And there's two ways how to do this. We could simply just double click on this hello world.xcode proj file, and that'll open up Xcode with our project in it. Or we can go over the terminal, since we're already here, and then do open hello world.xcode project and hit enter. What this will do is this will open our project in Xcode. Okay? And we wait a couple seconds. Okay? And it says loading hello world at the top. We're going to click on this little drop down here and we're going to expand the www, fo www folder. And we're going to click on our index.html. Okay? And we're going to go into our CSS folder as well. So this is pretty much where it all happens and where it all starts. This is where you'll be developing your app in, and this is where everything will will sort of work. So before we sort of do this, what I wanted to show you guys is the default launch of what the phone gap package builds for you. But before we do that, we're going to change this up here. Instead of iPad simulator, we're going to use an iPhone simulator. If you're building an iPad app, you would definitely want to use an iPhone, sim an iPad simulator. But since we're going to be developing iPhone apps, we're going to use the iPhone simulator. So we change that by just clicking and going to iPhone simulator. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the button that says run. Okay. Now what we'll do is Xcode will actually compile all these things. And that's perfectly fine if some errors come up and some warnings come up. Um... And Xcode will open up um, an iOS simulator. For those of you who are new to Apple development, this is sort of like your sandbox iPhone that you used to develop and see in. And this is going to take a while to load.
and okay for mine um, I think my hardware is a little bit different than yours so let me just give me a second I did a, I did some small changes to my hardware a couple my hardware settings a couple days ago. Okay, so let me go back actually to iPhone. Okay, if you've never changed any of your hardware settings, then this shouldn't apply to you. Okay, and once it builds, what's going to happen is that if you do a simple scroll over, you're going to see your app. And I happen to says hello world. And when I click on it, it says Apache Cordova and device is ready. So let's say, you know, we just sort of want to change a couple things here. You know, we're gonna change, we're gonna add in an H1 tag that says hello user. And we're gonna put in an H2 tag that says my name is Paul. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and run it. Okay, and by running it, you're also saving the file as well. So we can skip that step of saving. Not that we should ship it every day. You should always save your files every now and then. Click on Hello World, and there you go. It says Hello User, and then it also says My Name is Paul. Okay? So um, if we were to change this out of this whole blink, and move it up here, and then run it again, let's see what happens. Yeah, it takes it out of that, that, that blank class. Okay, so this is pretty much how you get started with um, your PhoneGap project with using the iOS. Um, it's pretty much the same thing if you're using Android, but except you're using Eclipse and you're using an Android um, emulator. Okay, thank you guys.